Cool. Well, my coffee's wearing off a little bit, so we'll see how this goes. And uh, now we're going to learn a little bit about uh, composition, embedding types, uh, inner, uh, what's it called, type promotion, or promotion maybe is just the right word to talk about it. And we're also going to learn about uh, methods. And so, and interfaces. So the things we will learn about, embedded composition, embedded types, which you might think of, if you're thinking OOP, you might think of uh, inheritance, but it's not, it's different. Embedded types and inner type promotion. And then we're gonna learn about methods and, uh, and then we'll learn about interfaces. Or I'm just going to say method and interface. I guess we could say interfaces, plural. So those are things we're going to learn about. If you're just catching this video online, there's going to be a playlist at YouTube at YouTube Todd McLeod. This is Silicon Valley Code Camp. I don't know what the name of the playlist will be yet. It's 2016. And then you should also follow me on Twitter. And so uh, the Twitter is right there. I know you're probably getting tired of that, but I'm going to launch something in December, and I want as many followers as possible so I can tell you about it because it's going to be awesome. And when I say awesome, I've been making eight to ten thousand dollars a month, supplementary income. So I'm taking, you know, my knowledge of that, and I'm going to share it with people. Like, look at how I'm making eight thousand, ten thousand a month every month. I've made 120 grand in the last year, supplementary income, passive. So once you figure out this model, you put in the work, it takes you two months, you create something, and, uh, and you put it out to the world, and um, it, it makes money. I'm creating teachings and selling teachings, but anyhow, I'm going to show you how to do that in December, so sign up so that you could be a part of that um, at Twitter, follow me. All right, I hit record, so we're, we're good. Now we're going to learn about these things. So I have type person struct. I'm going to take out that. I'm going to take out all this other stuff which we already did, and I'll leave uh, I'll leave uh, P1 person one is Todd McLeod, and I'll take that out because that field's no longer in there. And I'll take out this, and I'll just put P1. And so there's our starting point. And uh, and the first thing I'm going to teach you about, I guess, are methods. That's not using my keyboard short track. I'm going to leave it in that order actually. And so to do a method I use a receiver and uh, the receiver, and this could be anything, it's just like a parameter so that's my identifier. So you know uh, it could be WJX or QJA or whatever. It's my identifier and it's for person. So anything of type person will have access to this uh, method speak. And uh, it's not going to return anything, and all it's going to do is format print line. Uh, my name is QJA.FName. And now I could print line that. I could say P1 speak. And I don't even need the print line because I'm not returning a string. It's just print, so that would be it. So there's my method. That's how you attach a method to a type. So if you're coming from OOP, type is kind of like your object. A struct type, you know, type struct is like your object. Holds a bunch of fields. It knows something. It could also do something, like it has a method. It could speak. We do say method in Go, right? So that's the word terminology we use. But that's like an object with a method, right? Person knows something and it does something. It knows these two values and it does this thing. And now if I run this code, my name is Todd. Cool. So that's a method. All right? Anybody want to pause there for three minutes or you just want to keep rolling? So we've got a big body of knowledge. So we could do less and you could have more hands-on time or you could access all this code and kind of get the exposure and I'll walk you through it and you could program over the weekend. And catch me tomorrow here, by the way, for two hours. I'm going to do an hour presentation on the language and an hour presentation on web dev. But let's keep rolling. I don't see anybody saying pause. So the next thing I could do is I could create a new type. 
and this new type can embed another type. I'm embedding a type person. It's going to, if this was OOP, I'd say inherit everything that person is. But instead, since it's not OOP, it's more composition. The terminology we use to talk about it is inner type promotion. Everything that the person is gets promoted to secret agent. If there's a name conflict, if there's F name here also, right, because that's now a field, everything in person got promoted, it has F name, secret agent has F name, then there's a way to deal with that, right? So you'll, you'll see that in a second. But the only one I'm going to do here is I'm going to do license to kill, motherfucker. I got a license to kill, bool, right? And so now I could, I could have P1 person, and I could say Miss Money Penny, and uh, what does Miss Money Penny say? And I'm going to change this to P. That would just be more in line, but I didn't want you to, you know, think that that's special. What does Miss Money Penny say? She says, hello, James. I don't know. What did I mess up there? P dot. There we go. And I've been using double quotes for strings. You could also use back ticks, which gives you a string literal. And so I could do, right? And so it gives me a string literal. Anything between back ticks is now just string, OK? Miss Moneypenny says, hello, James. And so when I run this, except I misspelled Miss Moneypenny. And now I could do secret agent one colon equals is a secret agent and it's a uh, James Bond. I sometimes screw this up, so true license to kill. And then I could do sa one dot speak funk secret agent, secret agent, my receiver, speak, and there's a reason I'm using the same name for the identifier for each of those functions, for each of the methods attached to the two different types. We are attaching methods to types. Whoa. And, uh, and it's oh, SA, uh, first name, SA, last name, says and so now James says person in field value bond is type in field value too many values so this is what I need to do this is actually a struct it's person this is where I always Jack it up for whatever reason. And go fumpt formats your code. So it's a go command. You could go to the language spec. And under documents, they have command documentation, go commands. And the command I was just using is funct. You can use build, env, run, install, go version, right? All these different go commands. So go funct formats your code. Now that should run. This money penny says, hello, James. James Bond says, shaken, not stirred. Makes sense? Question. I can't hear you, man, over that blower. I've got some hearing loss. Okay. 
Oh, would it would it take on uh, would it take on person speak? Yeah. Interesting, huh? So that's a great great example of a uh, of a. Um, of what I was going to show with this, where you have a collision, right? Because, uh, and and the experienced devs will always ask about that, which is why I'm pointing out. And you asked about it, so I'm saying your experience, right? But now, SA, SA, I don't know if anybody's from the Mexican culture. We got a lot of Mexican around Fresno, and a SA, SA. SA1 speak is going to refer to directly to what's attached to secret agent, but I could also say SA1 person speak, and now I get the other one. Right? So I could namespace it directly down with dot notation to that which is attached. So give me speak which attached to person, which secret agent uh, embedded and intertype promotion is given to it. But if I don't specify, then it gives me the top level one. And if there's no, no namespace collision, right, then this one is at the top level. But if, if there is namespace collision, then this one's at the top level, and I'd have to do the dot person to get down to the one I wanted. So that's a great illustration of that. Did I start recording again? Cool. All right, so that's composition, and we have seen methods, embedded types, intertype promotion, and, and this is composition. Now we're going to look at interfaces, right? So I could uh, have a type and then an identifier, and my identifier is going to be say something, and this could be an interface, right? And an interface defines behavior, and so it's just like... <clears throat> Let me, let me show it to you. But anything that has the method speak now implicitly implements the say something interface. Okay? Implicit. You don't have to explicitly say implements this like in Java. But what this allows you to do is polymorphism. And so polymorphism is a... Uh, like a function can take in different types, and based upon what it takes in, it has different behavior. So a poly take in many different things, and more change based upon its behavior. So some say something is an interface. So now person is a type. So any, any value of type person also is now of type say something. And the underlying type of say something is in in. It gets a little bit convoluted, so I don't want to give you too much too fast. So now let's see, how could we use, like, uh, say something? We could create a new function, and we could do say something. Well, let me change the name of this. Let me actually change this to human. So both, this is better, human, and then say something. And this is a function. I hope I'm not confusing you. And say something is going to do a format print line, and uh, it will actually say something takes something of type human, and then h dot speak. So now I could come down here, and I could change this to say something, and I could pass in a human. And I could change this to say something. And I could pass in a human. Let's make sure it works. Still in the right folder, didn't copy it yet. So interfaces are really important. And it's a little bit, if you're new to them, it takes a little time to wrap your head around it.
but just kind of take a moment to see what's going on. We have two types. Each type has a method, speak. The human interface says anything that has the method speak, that a value of that, that, that type is also of type human. So even though we have a secret a value of person and a value of secret agent, so a value of that type, value of type person, a value of type secret agent, because they both have the method speak and the human interface, an interface defines behavior, the behavior that's defined for a human is that they need to know how to speak. That is now a new type. And implicitly, any value of type person implements the human interface. So they are also, this value is type person and it is type human. So any value of type person is also type human. Any value of type secret agent is also type human. It is two types. So if I create a function that takes type human, I could pass in both a person, a value of type person, and a value of type secret agent. And then I could call for a value of that type the speak method because they each have the speak method because that was defined in the interface. So interfaces define behavior, allow you to have polymorphism. Polymorphism. Right? So poly take in many different types. Say something takes in a person, takes in a secret agent. The reason it could take in a person and a secret agent is because a person and a secret agent are also type human. Right? So poly takes in many and morphism, each behavior, they just have to have that a method with that signature. Each one can be implemented differently. So we could have had way different implementations inside of speak for each of them. And so long as they have the same signature, right, then that's fine because that's what gets called. So that's interfaces and polymorphism. How many people feel totally comfortable with that? Raise your hand. Let me see. Cool. How many people? That's kind of new. Cool. All right. So that's, uh, that's just something that when you get to web dev, we're going to start like, hey, this is also a type writer. This is also a type reader, the writer and reader interface. Like we'll have, hey, we could pass in any type of a writer here, any type of a reader. So we'll just kind of see how that works as the day goes on. So that's, that's doing composition, embedded types, intertype promotion, methods, and interfaces. And this is all, these things are all the prerequisites, prereqs, 01 prereqs to understanding web programming. So there's a couple of hands-on exercises here. You guys want to keep seeing stuff or you want to take a second to do one? How many want to do one? How many people want to keep rolling? Keep rolling? Two people want to keep rolling? One person wants to do it? All right, we're going to keep rolling. We'll do that in the next video.